Hello, and welcome to our webinar, A Guide to the Treatment of Minors. We're going to talk about several issues regarding minors, but I'd like to touch base on uh, a few of them here now. One is consent and confidentiality. Most states do have laws pertaining to the sensitive information for the care of minors that they may consent to without their parent or legal guardian's knowledge. However, despite many of these laws, many minors fear that their parent or legal guardian will find out they're seeking out these health care services and in turn will limit their interaction with health care practitioners. For this reason, it is imperative that practitioners are aware of the consent and confidentiality protections and limitations for minors and discuss these with their minor patients in order to provide the best possible care for the minor patient. One thing uh, and we would like to talk about is the consent overview. Just so you know, a minor is a person with the um, under the age of 18 unless they are emancipated minor according to state laws. In most cases, a minor may not give consent for medical or surgical procedures. The consent must be obtained by the parent or the legal guardian. If parents are divorced or legally separated, consent should actually be from the legal custodial guardian. In this situation, you may have joint legal custody, sole legal custody, um, shared residential custody, sole residential custody. You just want to make sure that you are getting the um, consent from the parent or legal guardian that has the legal custody and not the residential custody. The right to consent for treatment can be delegated to another person who temporarily has care and custody of the minor by the parent or the legal guardian. And this should be in writing if you can get it there though so. In general, a physician can provide emergency care to a minor without parent or legal guardian consent. However, reasonable efforts should be made to locate the parent or legal guardian to obtain consent. Other types of consents are express verbal or express written. If the consent by the parent or legal guardian is obtained over the telephone, this should be overheard by two staff members and documented in the patient's medical record. A parent or legal guardian can also give what they call advanced consent for future medical care, such as immunizations. And again, this written consent should be in writing. And then we want to talk about confidentiality. When a minor is able to consent for specific types of treatment, the minor also has the right to decide who can gain access to their medical record. This will include alcohol and substance abuse patients. When a minor receives care without the parent or legal guardian's consent, the minor also needs to be made aware that the responsibility for payment of their care to protect their confidentiality. So another thing we want to look at is what are the, some of the practical considerations? Documentation in the medical record is to avoid inadvertent breaches of confidentiality. Who can the test re, um, results be communicated to? Who can medical records be released to? And what sections of the medical record require the minor consent to be released? And this should be reviewed by the practitioner before any medical records are shared. How can practitioners be reimbursed for minor medical care without the parent or legal guardian's involvement? And how will the minor pay their bill if they don't want their parent or legal guardian's insurance billed? Educating your staff and the minor patient about confidentiality with these specific health issues. The, the minor's preferred method of contact and who else can be contacted. Other practical considerations are structuring the office visit to see the minor with the parent or legal guardian, and then to be able to spend some time with the minor alone without the parent or legal guardian. Information that will be shared with others, such as situations where the minor may present a harm to themselves or others. Also looking at managing the patient portal access for the minor and their parent or legal guardian. And if a referral is made to a family planning, like a Title X clinic or free clinic or safety net program, more, it might be more important um, to ensure patient confidentiality. So some office practices will send their patients to these types of clinics um, in order to protect their um, confidentiality. When we, when we talk about general medical care, we talk about when the minor is under 18 years of age and that they may not be able to give consent to the performance performance of a medical or surgical procedure on themselves, as we stated earlier. Written consent needs to be obtained from their parent or legal guardian. The consent of a parent or legal guardian is also required for vaccines given to minors. There are exceptions, though. Consent may be given by the minor if they are emancipated, married, homeless, having getting care for a uh, sexually transmitted disease, 
care for, care for sexual assault if the minor is 12 years age of older, care for alcoholism or substance abuse, and if the minor is 12 years age of older or the care f relates to HIV testing. One thing we do want to note, though, is care should be taken to document the facts in the medical record at the time of the treatment and the minor gave written consent for the applicable treatment. Care should also be taken to ensure that the consent is informed and adequate given the minor's maturity status and presenting situation. So let's talk about a couple of those special situations that minors can fall under. Now, one is what they call emancipation. This is a minor who's under the age of 18, who lives away from their parent or legal guardian, is free from parental control, and is self-supporting. So basically, they live upside and apart from their parent or legal guardian. They are fully functioning on their own, and they can make their own medical decisions and their own financial decisions. They must be at least 16 years of age, a resident of the state, financially self-sufficient, and under no legal duty or service to the parent or legal guardian, nor entitled to the parent or legal guardian's support. They must, there must also be a judicial ruling that the minor is legally emancipated, and therefore the minor would have pa paperwork from a judge stating that they, are in fact, are emancipated under, under state law. Note here, a minor serving in the military or who is married is also considered emancipated. However, a homeless minor is not an emancipated minor. So another one of the topics we we're going to talk about that's uh, specific to minors is what they call the mature minor. Although there's no legal definition of a mature minor in the statutes, it's based off of a com common law concept based on a U.S. Supreme Court opinion that occurred between Planned Parenthood of Central Missouri and Danforth back in 1976. However, some jurisdictions do use the mature minor definition for the following. The minor is at least 15 years of age or older and is able to understand the risks and benefits of the proposed care in order to give informed consent. The medical care is for the minor's benefit. The care is necessary according to conservative medical opinion, and there's good reason, including the minor's objection for not obtaining parent or legal guardian consent. Another special topic we run into is the pregnancy issue. And a pregnant minor may consent for the care of her pregnancy, including prenatal care, the delivery services of her child, the treatment of complications, and any postnatal care. The minor may also consent for her child's medical care. The minor may not, though, consent for her own health care outside of the pregnancy, which, would, uh, which would, she would require from the parent or legal guardian consent unless the minor is emancipated. So, for instance, the minor could consent for herself and her unborn child's care for her pregnancy, but if she needed to get her gallbladder out, you would have to get her parent or legal guardian's consent, unless, of course, she is considered emancipated. Another special topic we run into is abortion. Abortion laws vary within each of the four states that MICA covers, which is Arizona, Colorado, Nevada, and Utah, and I'm going to refer to the chart on slide 26 for information as it pertains to abortion in each of these four states when we get to that slide. The next is sexual assault. A minor 12 years of age or older may consent to treatment for sexual assault if it is not possible to contact the parent or legal guardian due to the short time available before an examination and treatment are necessary. And again, this is for minors 12 years of age or older. Practitioners are required to report all sexual assaults to either law enforcement or the Child Protective Services Agency. Another topic we talk about is the communicable, communicable diseases and um, STDs. A minor may consent for evaluation and treatment for a sexually transmitted disease without a parent or legal guardian's notice or consent. A minor being treated for a communicable disease should be informed that this information will be reported to the state's Department of Health Services, regardless of whether the patient is a minor or adult, because communicable diseases must be reported to your local health authorities. Another topic is HIV testing. A minor may consent for HIV testing if they have the capacity to understand and appreciate the nature and consequences of the test. And so that should be assessed when the practitioner is assessing for um, doing HIV testing with the minor patient. A parent and or legal guardian consent will not always be necessary if the minor has the capacity to understand the reason for the testing. Another topic is alcohol and drugs. 
Although a practitioner can drug test a minor without their knowledge, it is not recommended to do so without having an honest discussion with the minor patient in order to not only preserve the doctor-patient relationship through trust, but also encourage open communication between the parent and the minor child. Drug testing should not be used for punitive measures, but to focus more on substance abuse or abuse treatment resources. A minor may seek care from an approved facility for alcohol or substance abuse. However, the parent or legal guardian must be notified as soon as possible if that minor is admitted to one of these facilities for treatment. A minor 12 years of age or older who is found other, under the influence of dangerous drugs or narcotics, including withdrawal from a drug, may be considered an emergency and can be treated as any other type of emergency. Another area we fall, fall into is mental health. A mental health screening exam cannot be performed in a non-clinical setting or perform mental health treatment on a minor without the written prior or oral consent of the parents or legal guardians, except in an emergency to prevent a serious injury or save the minor's life. So in this situation, it needs to, the mental health screening needs to occur in a clinical setting um, and be performed by a mental health professional or other health care provider. If consent is obtained using telemedicine, the practitioner must verify the identity of the parent or legal guardian at the site in which consent is given. And also, we run into what we were talking about earlier, which is emergency medical care. In the case of emergencies, a practitioner may treat the minor without consent from the parent or legal guardian if it is to treat a serious disease, illness, or injury, or to save the life of the minor patient. Every effort should be made to contact and obtain consent from the parent or legal guardian as soon as possible, but treatment should not be delayed while obtaining to do so. A minor refusal of consent. A competent minor can refuse care and, cons and consideration should be given to the minor's wishes when possible. However, when the minor's parents or legal guardian give consent and it, it is recommended to comply with the parent or legal guardian's instructions that are in the best interest of the minor patient, even if the minor um, is not giving their consent. We have some exceptions to the rules of parental consent. The following chart is for informational purposes only. It may not it may not be complete as laws frequently do change. However, this is a starting point for most of our states that we cover. For complete and up-to-date laws for each of these states, you can follow the available links that are attached to the reference guide at the back of this uh, at the end of this webinar. The following chart is not legal advice. We would suggest you consult legal counsel for specific information. And so, as you can see, I'm not going to go into every single detail as this pertains to each of the states that MICA covers, which is Arizona, Colorado, Nevada, and Utah. However, it does um, deal with the fact is what, what a minor child is, if they are emancipated, and the termination of parental rights in each of those states, what is, constitutes a homeless minor, sexually transmitted diseases, HIV and HIV-related issues, sexual assault, that are non-accidental injuries, alcohol and sub substance abuse, mental health treatment, birth control and family planning, pregnancy, and lastly, the abortion law that I was referring to earlier um, in the webinar in Arizona, Colorado, Nevada, and Utah specifically spell out what a, a minor can and cannot do regarding abortion. And lastly, we, just, we take you to the state statute references. Um, these are references for um, Arizona, Colorado, Nevada, and Utah, and you can click on any one of these links that it will take you to the most current information regarding minors. And with that, I'd like to end this webinar, and we thank you for participating. And should you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the MICA Risk Management Hotline at area code 602-808-2137. Thank you and have a wonderful day.